Oh wait, I didn't even do a microphone test. Microphone has now been tested. We're good. <laughs> I just kind of th I just kind of put everything together last a minute and I was like, "Wait, sometimes I plug in the microphone and it doesn't want to work, so I got to go back, go through the process of getting it to work and all that." Anyways, day 2 of the Messenger. Uh I started it yesterday. Now I really want to continue playing it. It's a it's a good game. It's not the longest game, which means that technically if I keep going at this rate, I could have it finished by the end of the week. Anyways, yesterday what happened is I've got to change the audio so I can hear myself a little bit better. There we go. So, yesterday what we did, we started the entire game uh, we were given a prophecy. We had to climb a mountain, made it to the top of said mountain, and was introduced to this tower known as the Tower of Time. We went through its trials, fought the boss there, and now we end up in a area that has a lot of that Sega Genesis audio twang, as I refer to it as. Oh, new trophy as well, Sweet 16. So this basically tells you what happens. You went from 8-bit to 16-bit, and time traveled to the future. They could have mentioned that in text, but you know what? The trophy says so too. The mechanics are pretty much the same in the future. It just looks different. It looks better. I I like this futuristic look. Or futuristic 16-bit. You've had the stuff since the 90s. Or some window of time around there. What was the SNES made? I don't know. The shop also looks a little bit different, and it seems like the text for the cabinet is pretty much the same. Or is it? Oh right, no. What happened? I warped or something and everything looks different now. Hello? Okay, that is a really cool hat! Seriously, wow! Any idea what happened to them? Sorry, I just can't get over the hat. Upgrades. There's the one that's unlocked now because I died yesterday. Basically, Devil's do. It is, I think, 60 seconds or a certain amount of time shards and then Corbel will leave. Reducing the fine basically cuts that hat time in half or the requirement of things that get taken away from you. Still can't afford it, it's 400 time shots, I got 190. Welcome to the Cloud Ruins, remnants of a civilization of giants that used to live in the sky. This place is beautiful, but the structures feel precarious. Yeah, bad place if you're afraid of heights. How high am I? You mean, in my opinion? What? Oh, geographically. Well, you went to the Tower of Time at the top of the mountain that exits to the top of the tower. So I'd say fairly high. Enjoy the sights! The new look discussion can be done later. I want to explore a bit. Now, the music also sounds different because, I mean, come on, you're in the future. It's not going to sound chiptune forever. I do like the... I like the chip tune. It has its charms for, of course, being in an 8-bit style world. I like the future soundtrack more, which does in fact have every track that you can hear in the past time in the future. The reason why I said probably don't listen to the soundtrack quite yet is because there was also this future soundtrack, which now that it's known that the game takes place in both the past and future, it's fine. Go ahead. Also, why would I stop you? It's a good soundtrack. Support the artists. And I think, like, the tempo for this song is a little bit more like... Okay, I say tempo as if I understand what the word means. I haven't taken a music class. Just ever. 
that was not my area of expertise in any sort of class I've taken in my past. Oh yeah, with the falling platforms here, you gotta be quick on your feet. Which is of course why we have the grappling hook, or the whatever it was called. I forgot what it was. It's only been a day. I've been trying to find more games to play on my own time because it's like, I got this with PlayStation Plus. I only have so much space on my thing and don't have, like, an external drive. But I started playing a game called Tinykin yesterday, which I think is a very fun game. It's definitely something worth checking out. You're, you're just, you're a tiny guy in a, like, giant world. Also, this is not a bottomless pit. But, like, you are... You play as a character named Milo, or Milo Dane, or something like that, in... Bottomless Pit. And... You're trying to find out, like, the truth of... Like, the origin of humanity, which is not from your little planet, so you go and explore the planet that's supposed to be from, but you're like, you're a tiny little guy, and talking with all these bugs, and exploring the little world they have built there. It's very neat. I know that the stream is not about that game, but I might stream it at some point. Because I think it has its charms, and I also like the gameplay. Which, I'm just gonna say it, it gives me vibes of Pikmin. Because I mean, like, you are controlling an army of tiny creatures that can do certain tasks. And they all have their own little tasks that they can do. Anyways, enough about Tiny Kid for now. Play it later. Okay, I don't think I can go to the side there. I kind of wish there were between rooms here, but you can't go through that. Oh, wait. Shopkeep. Shopkeep equals discover. Hello there. So, cool hat. Oh, you like that? Is that why you chose to wear one as well? What? Well, you have the same hat. No, I got it first. Oh, is that what you're going to tell yourself? Fine. I did have the hat first. You were all over it. Right. Yeah, that all happened. Sure. It's true, though. Look, you can put your head in the sand all you want in an attempt to preserve your ego, but it's clearly not going to work on the person that was there when it all happened. New look. What's the deal with everything looking so different? You know, I was wondering how you were going to deal with the implications of time travel. It seems ignorance reality is bl Ignorance reality really is bliss, not ignorance reality what? Pardon? That moment in the Tower of Time. Yeah? It sent you to the future! Neat. Yes, precisely. Neat. No upgrades. And 35 power seals. Okay, so I have gotten 10 at this point. The ground changes to clouds. I was gonna say, for an area called the Cloud Ruin, set tents make a lot of sense. But it's actually a chase sequence. You cannot go through the bottom of clouds because it's not those types of platforms. Point proven. Once you make it to the end of the cloud sequence, the scary red dragon flies off. Oh, and another shop right afterwards. Just in case you collected any time shards that you could have upgraded things with. No, there were no time shards there. But while we're here, do we have any stories? There once was a starving little boy who never missed a chance to help his fellow villagers. One day, after helping an old man carry a heavy bundle of wheat, he was offered a loaf of bread. Eat your fill, my boy. It is well deserved, he began. But if you feel like helping even more, there are two gnomes hiding in the forest who are even hungrier than you are. Now that boy was an empathetic one. His mind was made up instantly. After a short hike, he found the gnomes and split the bread between the two 
with them without even saving a bite for himself. Thank you, kind little boy, the gnomes beamed. It seems you have lifted our curse. Indeed, to punish them for their greed, a spirit had put them under a rather annoying spell. They were exiled to the forest carrying a magic little mill capable of producing anything its bearer desired. The little mill's magic would only be activated once the gnomes were fed by a stranger acting out of selfless generosity. To starve while carrying a relic promising abundance, a cruel fate indeed. Now you can imagine the little boy's surprise when he was given the magic item. Name something you want while turning the crank to the right, and the little mill will produce an endless stream of it, the gnomes explained. Turn it to the left and it will stop. After creating a huge pile of food for the two gnomes, the young boy went back to his village to help the populace with his newfound powers. But as he grew in popularity, his older sister grew in jealousy. One night, she couldn't take it anymore and stole the little milk from her brother's bedside table along with two leftover pies from that afternoon's feast. Adding insult to injury, she left on the family's fishing boat to reach new lands, hoping to have her turn to the royal popular purveyor. Once out at sea, she decided to try one of the pies, which to her taste were lacking a little something. It was time to try that little mill's magic, she reckoned. Give me salt, she said, turning the crank to the right. And salt she got, heaps and heaps of it. Now, older sister had never bothered paying attention how the mill could be stopped. Stop, little mill, stop, she shouted, little first annoyed, then worried, and finally panicked. Salt soon overflowed the boat itself, sinking it under the weight. It is said that the sunken little mill is still operational to this day, and is the reason why seawater is salty. The end. That was interesting, but it feels more like a kid's story than actually explaining things about the world we know the actual reason for. Tough crowd, huh? Why don't you tell me a story and I'll judge it? So you're looking for additional takeaways? How about this? Seeing how Big Sister's anger led to her demise, irritated people were henceforth referred to as salty. Oh, I got another one. Seeing how Big Sister's shortcomings as a little mill operator led to her demise, unqualified people were henceforth referred to as not being worth their salt. Hey, this is fun. You should go. I'll keep on coming up with morals to do with salt. I love the sarcastic dialogue, too, because it's just like, Oh yeah, fine, this is the way you want it. I'll give you what you're looking for. So the moral of the story, you're not, like... Not worth their salt. Angry people referred to as salty. Whether or not that's true, we'll never actually know. This is dialogue in a video game. I believe it is rather witty dialogue in a video game. To the extent of which my beliefs of wit can go. Which I'm not going to claim that it's anything special. But yeah, since it's not April Fool's Day, I can also mention, because, I mean, you can never trust anything people say on April Fool's Day, let's be completely honest, April marks Autism Awareness Month, and therefore, I wish to state that's probably me as well. And to that extent, I'm going to try and stream more often, if I have the time to do that, because I... You never know how your schedule is really going to go. I was going to probably be free Thursday night, and then I picked up something until like 6.30. So I'm no longer free Thursday night. How the way that the art goes. The art of time. I don't even know if I went the right way. Oh no, I probably did go the right way, but I missed whatever secret was back there. Oh well. Or I could go back and not say oh well. Which honestly, as I start doing that, I realize... Is stupid. If you're watching, you can pretend there was input lag. We're fine. There are no witnesses. There was no input lag. lag. That was just an acknowledgement of fault. Okay. I, lo I both like and hate Quarble. Probably due to the sarcasm. But it's also like, hey, by the way, 
don't take fault for your own actions. Something happened. I mean, you messed up, but you can just claim that there was something else. It's like, no, not really the way that I go about things. But I did get back here, so you know what? Problem solved anyways. Where does it take us? But a Another ring of time... Oh. Another ring of time shards to get taken by this stupid... What even is it? It's like a demon? Oh but yeah, I think it is referred to as like a greed demon. Which I think is a fitting name for the sake of its due. Is it due payment? Okay, that You can jump up walls while you're holding on to them. Keep that in mind when you're about to die because you keep bumping into stupid spikes. When I say it gets harder as you go along, it's not a lie, because there are, well, okay, there are also areas worse than here. Such as another chase sequence in the clouds. So, as it is well known well enough, uh, these chase sequences do have those bottom pits you can help because of the dots, but I guess just hole in the ground. Uh, like usual, don't fall in them. I don't know how many that makes at this point. On top of whatever many times I said yesterday, which I did not go back and check because I didn't really want to. Not all the clouds get destroyed, at least. Oh wait, I can actually buy stuff. I want to shorten the payment. Now we're left with one upgrade left. That is gonna be two hours time. Depending on how many times I die. Which I'm gonna hope is not many. Also, I had other thoughts in mind of things I could do for, like, stream stuff. And in some amount of time, like, I know on PC, Stardew Valley got its 1.6 update released. I got Stardew Valley on PlayStation because of the little, like, sub not a subscription service, but, like, reward service they had. Being like, hey, you can get Stardew Valley for this number of points, and I actually had it. And I was thinking, hey, if the game's on sale... Not game, not film. But if I can get the game for free and the update gets released there, I can probably, like, I don't know, stream a Stardew Valley farm. Which brings me back to 2018 when I had tried my hand at, like, making videos a while back. And that didn't go the greatest because, I mean, come on, I was a kid. Old enough to actually do the internet stuff, but I still consider anything below the age of 18 as a kid and try to avoid as such. Okay, I avoid talking to people online in general, unless it's like friends. I do like how there's this enemy is also running away. Unequipped to handle the tasks ahead. It dies. I knew that there was one of these sequences that I would have died and it turns out it was the third. That's why they have the secret. Not secret. That's why they have the doors before you. I guess because it's like if you decide to. Oh yeah! Um. Coromel can also leave if there's, like, a boss or some scary creature that can end up... Okay, I don't know what... But it does something. I don't know what the case of the fear is, unless it's just like, oh, that's a big scary dragon. I don't want to deal with that.
Of course, it's that area with the level boss. Hey, I'm not sure what's up next, but the prophet wanted me to repeat a line for you at this point in the adventure. Alright, let's hear it. Okay, I always want to try the voice. Check it out. And on this day, the messenger shall unwittingly make his lifesaver indebted to him. And that means... I'm not sure, but if all else fails, attack the fireballs. The reason why there are so many shops is probably because it expects you to... Okay, probably not expect you not to have the Strike of the Ninja upgrade, but... Definitely allows you to get it at any chance that you need, because you wouldn't be able to strike the fireballs if you weren't. Oh yeah, so the boss is that dragon that's been following us around the entire time. You hit it in the face, it flies away. You can only jump so high, so you can't hit it when it's that far up in the sky. That and also future bosses are a little bit harder than the original ones. Like, I think the hardest boss in the original run... Damn, I don't even remember, because I really did not struggle with him that much. Okay, at this point I'm just kind of in a state of focus, because other than, oh hey, giant sky dragon thing flying at us, dangerous, can kill you, it's just like, what else do I have to say? Oh yeah, uh, ground gets destroyed, can't come back by certain circumstances, such as putting the dragon in a stunned state. better to play your cards the most safe way that you can. Defeat the Sky Serpent. Okay, so it's not a dragon. And it's also not dead. It's actually friendly. I've been watching you for a long time, messenger. Who are you, anyway? <laughs> so the disguise did fool you. It's a shame you freed my slave pet, but no matter. I am now certain I can defeat you. It's Barbarian. You! Wahaha! <laughs> Surprised? Time to pay for what you did to my people. Bold words coming from such an unprepared adventurer. The underworld awaits you, messenger. At last, the scroll will be ours. Watch your step now. By the way... That wasn't really a bottomless pit. For the sake of the cutscene. I don't know, breaking the norms of... Mechanics for the sake of storytelling. Eh, that's the way it goes. I say this as if I know anything about storytelling. Which... I don't really know. Like, I've written a couple things in my time. And by a couple, I mean... One. Which... As much as I was kind of, like, disinterested in that is something I still accept the fact that I had a part in. Like, it could have definitely been a situation that went better. And 
I think that it did have potential, and does still have potential given the right people, but situations happened in which that it did not have the same artistic capability that it could have under a slightly different situation. I'm being very cryptic about this because it involves personal information of people who I wish to not divulge on the internet like an idiot or an asshole. I have a friend that does his own streams, which I'm g gonna give him a little promotional thing because I think his streams are honestly better than my own because he has a lot more capabilities for dialogue and things to discuss rather than just talking about gameplay mechanics and then going silent for a minute and a half because you gotta focus and also he plays like Final Fantasy so it's dialogue heavy I didn't know if there was a shop here but it turns out there is welcome to the lion's den oh I didn't see any lions no I meant to ah never mind one sec alright I'm back the heat is almost unbearable. Come on, I'm happy to avoid certain cliches, but to think we wouldn't have lava to end your epic quest is pushing it. Well, guess we're done here then. Anyways, uh, my friend on his stream goes by the name of Silly Sill, I think number is 78. And I recommend his streams. I think they're worth watching. And he also does like Jackbox streams, which has its own share of just fun comedy and creativity. Which, I mean, then again, you have a group of artists getting together to just kind of mess around and make things or make jokes. Lava's an instant death. Don't fall in it. I think it's an instant death, at least. Back to where I was going with this, though. Uh, I highly recommend the streams. I think there is a lot of content to be had there. Uh, types of streams that he does are like Pokemon Nuzlocke's Jackbox streams, plays Final Fantasy, and sometimes does little polls of like, hey, what game should I play next? And... Like the... Okay, it's not what game should I play next, but it's what game should I play before I make the next poll. Because some games require getting people together and Final Fantasy is always an open option for a solo stream. I'm not knocking the stuff. I'm not knocking the strategy, because you know what? It got a new affiliate. So, congrats to SillySill78 on making affiliate sometime eight months ago. And I wish to see your stream prosper and continue to grow. Yes, I have basically just promoted a friend in my own stream of nobody, but you know what? It's good content. Why not? Talk about the things you like. I don't read out the, do you have any stories to share? Of course, here's one for you dialogue every time because it's every time it's the exact same stuff. There once was a guy visited by a succubus. Far from being that kind of demon, she offered him a unique chance to visit hell as a tourist. Very adventurous by nature, he jumped right into the portal. They arrived in a room where giant cauldrons boiled over bonfires. They contained people which little, where little demons with pikes were sitting up the room to push anyone who tried to escape back inside. Who's in that cauldron? The man asked his succubus tour guide. This one? That's where liars and cheaters end up, she explained. And this one over there, she continued. That's for people who hunt for sport. Aghast, the man noticed another cauldron, much bigger than the other ones, and devoid of any demons sitting on its rim. Indeed, that one cauldron seemed to self-regulate. People were pulling back in anyone who tried to escape. And who's this cauldron for? GJ asked, curious as... Curious as to be so stubborn in their ideology that they would rather hurt themselves than think, rethink their worldview. Oh, that cauldron, succubus mused. Lots of people who think the order doesn't apply anymore when another line opens up in the market. The end. Okay, now you're just using the platform to vent. What is wrong with you? Are you that guy? 
Which guy? The guy who's fifth in line but rushes to be first in when a new line opens up. Oh, right, different timeline. Never mind. No comment. Maybe it goes to show that I am that type of guy, but let's be honest. I don't want to spend all my time at the store. That goes by an unnamed form because... Mostly I try to not state brands or promote their garbage. For reference, I was not paid to promote my friend's stream. Wait. Am I going backwards? I completely forgot which way I came from to the point of possibly going backwards. I'll probably figure out if I am when I get... Okay, yeah, I am. I was wondering what point it would get to in, in the game that I would end up getting mixed up and going the wrong way, and as it turns out, it was here. I made it most of the way. The same enemies that we've been seeing throughout the entire area are also present here in the Underworld because... I mean, it's the Demon Army. And from what it seems... The boss here is going to be a demon. Then what affiliation are the greed demons on? That's actually a question worth asking, because if it's all about, like, the fight against the demon army, the demon general's army, what's with the greed demon? Like, the greed demon, for a price, is here to save you from the brink of death, while, of course, you also feel the immeasurable pain that comes with every opportunity of failure. So I mean, like, are they in it for fun? Are they doing it because they have no affiliation to the demons and it's like, hey, don't lump us in with those guys who are trying to go out of their way to end the world? Or is it like those blue-robed people's association with them allows them to have the affiliation of. It's the questions you're not fully sure of that you always gotta ask questions about. Whether or not you're able to find an answer in it, I don't fully know if they mentioned that along those lines of lore or in the ARG type thing. The creators of this game have a Discord server. Which means, the creators of this game may even have the answer, if it was not stated in official dialogue. Because all you really need to do is have a curious mind that can go into the insightful aspects of things that were not officially elaborated on to get answers for questions that you don't know the answers to. I shouldn't have come down here. Oh yeah, uh, this guy also counts the number of times you die. So what it had said was something along the lines of like 10 at this point. Which is not that bad because the first time I played through this game, I died at least 15 times in the opening area. Okay, not the opening, but Autumn Hills. Probably had to clarify because of the achievement that was defeat the intro without dying. Now this way is completely optional. You don't have to go here. But it's a secret! Power seal is more open in this room because the gauntlet was in a separate one. So, congrat- like, not, Why am I congratulating myself? So much for the challenge of getting power seals, I guess. The worst you have it is the lava that goes up and down. And I mean, you can glide. Slightly faster than the lava goes down, but if you have a wall you can stick on, that's a good way to hold your time. And 
here we are. Are there any achievements that I need to keep in mind while I'm going about this? Because now that I'm thinking about it, I there might be something more around here. I'd like to hope I didn't miss anything, but I feel like if I go out of the game, then it's going to pause the stream again. And I can honestly just look at the trophies through the app. Of course, the hardest one was making from the beginning of the game to beating the Queen of Quills with zero deaths. But I play the game enough that I'm pretty well accustomed to doing that. gonna get one out of the way. There we go. Walking on air. Execute 15 cloud steps without landing or clinging to a wall. So there are some that you can, like, you can get those but under certain circumstances, or, like, I don't know, doing certain things that you wouldn't fully know unless you read the achievement. I'm going for them all, so. Looks like the, gene, looks like the demon general is up next. Be careful out there, I hear he's pretty fast. There's a reason why I chose to play this game first. I will be playing Sea of Stars. For those who are not aware of either this game or Sea of Stars story, I'm not actually gonna continue that sentence. Nowhere left to run, demon. Why would I run? You stepped right into my trap. We'll see about that. <laughs> we end this now, champion of the blue robes. The Demon General, whose name I still can't fully pronounce, so I'm not going to try to. Very fast, very quick on his feet. Dashes around from location to location in the capability, in the attempt to try and get to you. Oh yeah, if you throw your shurikens at him, he'll deflect them. I'm pretty certain I'm going to get a couple deaths on this fight because I am not good at dodging. There we go. I'm not good at dodging him as he's dashing around the room. Oh, it also counts the number of time shards that you've wasted. Another shot. Another attempt at the fight. go around in a little circle to try and avoid the dashing. Anyways, with a sky like this, you get a couple shots at it. Definitely a threatening boss. I mean, I didn't even bring him down to whatever threshold it takes for the boss to glow, and he has already got me down to last two hits. Oh, there we go. Next we have the spinning, I guess, flame scythe. Those are just, like, dual blades or something like that. There we go. Second death. I'm just going to keep track of how many times I've died in this boss fight, because it's, it's not the easiest one. 
fact, I think out of all the ones in this game, this one is technically the hardest one. Definitely the one that I struggled with the most in my original run. My last one, which I did on Steam, was a little bit easier. So when does he call it quits? That's when he calls it quits. You don't even have to say things. You can just think them and then things go awry, such as, I think I'm doing pretty well, and then you just instantly get damage. Deaths. Or you could have watched your step, he says. Uh huh. With every run that we do, it gets slightly easier. Very slightly easier. So every boss has a unique theme, which I also really like, because it gives, instead of being like a simple boss, like a simple normal boss theme, it gives more character. Like I thought the game was going to be like, oh yeah, just one boss theme, regular boss theme, except for like very specific situations with like the leaf monster boss theme. No, there was, like, a lot more. There we go. More like a dumb in general. <laughs> Defeat the demon general. Impossible. I'm the fastest there's ever been. Tell me how to end this curse, or else. <laughs> is it that simple in your head, ninja? All of this is bigger than you or me. I'm ending this. Your demon king is next. Make no mistake, messenger. None of us are leaving this place alive. If I can't have the scroll, then it shall be destroyed. The game ends with an explosion. Or does it? There's not much you can really avoid. It's all gone. You're forced to fall. Close call. And you're saved by the Sky Serpent from the last chapter. Area. Voice for the dragon. I'm not fully sure. I got you, buddy! Thanks, I guess we're even now. 
Oh yeah. What's your name? Manfred. 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 What kind of name is that for a Sky Serpent? It's not my birth name, but I always wanted to be a butler. Okay. Well, you should dress for the job you want and not the one you have, right? So? So call me Manfred. Alright, Manfred. What did you do before the demons mind controlled you? No time to explain, this is your big moment. Leaving the underworld, he crossed a large, vast ocean. The flight takes you to... A destroyed village. With a demon king. Oh, were you hoping for the western hero? No prophecies for you, Worm. Prepare to die. Seems awfully familiar, doesn't it? You! I see Bomathezel failed me once again. Your reign is over, despot. Ha 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 You think this is how it works? Know your place, ninja. Our curse is never ending and your time is up. As for you, soldier, I can't wait for my minions to make short work of you. That was amazing! You're the western hero, right? No, I'm... I travel so far east that I made it back to my village from the west. Everything's so different. Did the Tower of Time really send me to the future? I guess this means... Hey, I have an important task for you, I think. Pardon? I mean, take this scroll. You need to carry it across the world to the top of the highest mountain. Really? I'm 100% down to leave this outpost. Yes, a messenger is needed. A messenger? Godspeed! What? Just take the scroll. And there we go. And so your time as the messenger is up. What do I do now? Well, you could take a few moments to appreciate the reveal that it was all just a loop. No way, I still want to be a part of the adventure. Oh, we'll get right to that. What do you mean? I mean, it's time. Time for what? For you to finally open the cabinet. Really? Yes, go ahead and open it. Nah, I'm up. Please do touch the cabinet. I already told you the cabinet is where it is. Believe me, you are ready for what's in there. There's no skeleton in there, I promise. Hey, do open it. It's not empty. I already unlocked it. Why don't you put that curiosity to good use and open the cabinet already? If you don't open the cabinet soon, you'll have to sit through my boring story. I'm warning you, it's boring. It's philosophical. I'll even remove your ability to skip what I'm saying. Third time's the charm, you know what they say. This is your last warning. You better make sure you have some time ahead of you if you're ready to keep doing that. Where do you do that? Alright, let me share with you my understanding of Madame Melody's work. After observing so many humans over such a long period of time and reading as much as I could, some trends inevitably come up. One thing we all have in common is the need to feel like we have value, power, and abundance in our lives. Now, like many things, there are functional and dysfunctional ways to go about these. Say you are dysfunctional. Your sense of value may come from approval on others, making you dependent on seeking attention, begging for others to tell you what that who you are is adequate. You will feel good when you receive positive feedback, but always be one negative comment short from having your day ruined. Now about power. Functional people get a sense of power by exercising control over others, sometimes right down to police in the way they talk or who they engage with. They feel good when they have a weak partner or friend to control, but feel depressed and weak themselves when no one is around to feed their ego. Their sense of abundance will often come from material things, displaying of high status or promiscuity. Even though it feels great while the money and the crowd are there, those who lack, those, these lack real depth, and the impact of the inevitable downfall would be hard to overstate. For functional people, it is scarcely documented that they are generally busy living a meaningful life. Functional people get their sense of value from an understanding and acknowledgement of their inner worth. Their sense of power comes from an ability to self-contain and let others be who they are while protecting themselves, protecting themselves when needed. 
and abundance simply comes from good self-care. Now, all of this makes sense in theory, but the idea is to be able to apply it. For this, you first need to master your emotions. As I understand it, everything you experience is a mix of the big five. Fear, joy, sadness, anger, and shame. The primary colors of our experiences, if you will. Mix fear with anger and you get jealousy. Too much sadness in your joy will make you melancholic. The only way to unpack complex emotions is by breaking them down into which of the big five are concerned, and to deal with each of, indiv each of these individually. Easier said than done, right? Consider haunted house stories for a moment. They're always the same, aren't they? Starts off with the optimistic fools moving in. Soon enough, odd things begin to happen, and fear ensues for a while. Eventually, the protagonist has had enough and decides to face the ghost. What? What do you want? They will ask, tired of cowering in fear. As it turns out, ghosts usually know what they want, and it's usually the same thing. The person who wronged them to face justice is to then be put to rest. That's usually where the killer faces a trial, and the ghost's body is respectfully buried. And just like that, the house becomes a warm haven again. Did you get the metaphors? If you often feel depressed, irritated, or however hindered in your general ability to engage with life, you are just like a haunted house. Your inner child is hurt, and will be increasingly uncomfortable to you until you turn around and ask, what do you want? If asked honestly, you will find that the answers were within you all along, and that following through with that inner child's request is both challenging and life-changing. Only then can you begin the process of discovering your true self to finally get rid of your chains. These were my finally ramblings. Please keep in mind that I am but a shopkeeper. Everything I say should be taken with the biggest grain of salt you can find. Please open the cabinet now. You said this was a platformer. He lectured on the inner child. The one that I missed in my steam run. And so, for the cabinet. So it's just a closet for blue robes? Why yes, what did it look like? Well, don't just stand there, grab one of your sides. I think I hear someone coming, get behind the counter. Oh? What is this? Ah, the mess- Ah, the messenger. I wasn't expecting you so soon. What is this place? This is the shop. It doesn't look like a shop. Hey, I said- so, I mean, do I look like a shopkeeper? What? Anyway, here's a power-up that'll let you charge your beam. Oh, there's upgrades too? Sweet! Thanks for the beam charger upgrade. You bet. You know, the way everything looks, it just felt like I should be able to do that. Yes, that's why Ray Troy invented it decades ago. Ha. Ha ha ha. Okay. I forgot this line of dialogue for a moment. Who is Ray Troy? Just to follow up to an earlier joke. I don't get it. Some will. So. You know how that guy played the role of a gunner, right? It's like in a Metroid game, where you play the game as a gunner. And then you have, say, John Gaiden. You're playing as a ninja. Ninja Gaiden. John Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden, Raytroid, Metroid. It comes full circle. Just to prove a point. Hey, is everything alright? It's kind of boring, but I guess I'm okay. No, I'm, no, I mean, it's been a while since your messenger visited. Oh, I don't know. I didn't enter the shop so often myself. You're in the Tower of Time, remember? So? So it should be automa should automatically take you forward to the time and time to the next important moment. Which is, either your messenger enters the shop, or dies. Oh? Did your messenger die? How would I know that? By using the scrying orb. If Corval isn't sent within 10 seconds, your messenger dies for good. And when were you planning on mentioning that? Oh no, oh no, 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 no! 
We need to fix this. Oh, is it we now? Come on, now's not the time to argue. We have to look at this holistically. Look at this holistically? What does that even mean? It means I'm as lost as you are, but I still want you to think I'm the smartest one here. I'll fetch the scroll, hold on. Be right back, I need to talk to the others. So something went wrong. Pretty much the best way to state it. Okay, we've reached an agreement. You're the one that needs to finish this. Really? Yes, really. You wouldn't really fit to be a shopkeeper anyway. I'll leave the squirrel here with your clothes. Come join us after you've changed. I do not control the movement of shopkeeper messenger. But I do control the change. Go to the door. I can't take you anywhere. You've been here for a while. But there is this new space in the wall. An updated song of effectively the same place. But it's also not. This is the same song as the Tower of Time. But you didn't have a room like this. You didn't have a room like the entrance. Hey, it's you! I really miss that time when we did the thing! The others don't want to do it anymore. Welcome to the Tower of Time. I put it back into its headquarters for after you beat the challenge. And that dialogue explains where we are. It is the Tower of Time. It is not the challenge anymore. Which I had designed myself, by the way. If you want to replay it, let me know. You may have missed a few hidden things. I sure hope I didn't. But let's look at it this way. I might have. Look, all I'm saying is he's been carrying the scroll for a long time already, and it could be dangerous. It is exactly as was foretold in the visions. A born again messenger will master time itself to end the curse by fighting in two cycles simul simultaneously. I don't know, warping once you go to the future was risky enough. Do you think I can sustain doing that constantly? Well, unless you want to carry the squirrel again, I don't see what other choice we have. Besides, we really need to find the remaining music notes. So you still believe the music box is important? Well, I am the prophet, right? So? So yes, I do believe in the prophecy. Well, if you really mean to help the messenger, try to tone it down in that wannabe epic tone of yours. Careful, heathen! The mists of legend are very complex, and an attempt to trivialize their meaning may cause- Whatever, I'll be in my shop. So, the prophet will be your guide from now on. Good luck with that. Here we have a bunch of little doors. The prophet requires a moment of your time, messenger. The doors are not open. But if you look at them a little bit, you see some things that are familiar. Like the red leaves of the autumn fields. Except for some mechanical looking stuff that is a bit more befitting of that new village. These trees, rocks, and flowers are strange. You got the green stones of the Howling Grotto. A darker blue stone between the Howling Grotto and the... Oh, one sec. And the Searing Crags. Not very familiar. And then you have the snow and the evergreens of the Glacial Peaks. Is there more to this world than we envisioned? Well, we can only find out when we see the prophet has to say. So the messenger rises once more. I'm not sure what I should do next. The mists of time are quite intricate indeed, but fear not, for the prophet is here to unravel their meaning. More like the interpret then, am I right? I will forgive this affront, for these are troubled times. Behold, messenger, as the Tower of Time's portal nexus activates to help you on your quest. You are free to return. 
three locations of your past. Return here whenever you seek guidance, and I shall provide. Godspeed! Returning back to the Tower of Time after finding out that things went mildly awry, we have three directions that we can go in. We can return to the Autumn Fields. We can return to the Howling Grotto. We can return to the Glacial Peak. Which is something that we can explore a little bit later. Where is my closest save point? Oh wait. Probably in a direction of somewhere. I always take the portal to the Autumn Autumn Hills, so I think I'll just start off in the Howling Grotto this time. Hey, you warped! Yeah, pretty neat. Things are probably going to get cryptic from now on with all this profit business. You'll probably want to make extensive use of your map. My map? Your map, yes. I don't have a map. Are you kidding me? I'm telling you, I don't have a map. Okay, let me get this straight. We gave you a scroll. The fate of this whole world seems to hinge on it. We gave you a hero title relating to it. You carry it for days across countless perilous situations, even through time itself. And you never even bothered reading it! You're an animal. Turns out the scroll was actually a map. Press the touchpad to open it. Time to explore and find new areas. Well then. This gives you a little bit more insight into the world that we live in. And a couple more lines and areas that we've been that we haven't gone through yet. And a map that shows you all the locations you've been through. So of course, start off in the Ninja Village. You go to the Autumn Hills, the Forlorn Temple which follows you to the Catacombs. Catacombs lead to Bamboo Creek, Bad Bamboo Creek is Howling Grotto. Howling Grotto to Quilshoot Marsh, then to the Searing Crags, then to the Glacial Peak. The Glacial Peak led you to the Tower of Time, slightly different area. Oh yeah, by the way. Taking a scan of this, there are no extra lines. I've been everywhere in the Tower of Time. Good. Cloud Ruins. Some lines in places that I've missed. And then, the Underworld from the Cloud Ruins. There's more of these areas that I have yet to explore. I'll be in my shop. If you have a coin, I'll be happy to mess with the profit by pointing out hints on your map. Be safe now. And that is it for today's stream of the messenger. Mainly because I have limited time. It is currently 12.02. This is of course Eastern time, so Eastern time does Eastern things. I got some stuff I need to do. I've got stuff going on later today, but I thought I'd throw in an hour as a messenger. We'll see how this all goes next stream. It was fun.